What's up, guys? Artist Version 1 here, and welcome back to another edition of the three-way dance. And, of course, you can't have the three-way dance unless there's three of us. So joining me, as always, is Shelby, a.k.a. Shubs. hey -o. And, as always, Nick. Hello. You want to try that again there, Mr. Roboto? <laughs> Hello. There we go. All right, we have a packed show here tonight. We have some news you need to get to. We're going to talk about WrestleMania backlash there. But a couple little things I want to mention here first. First things first, uh, somebody asked, hey, where's our Apple backlog? Because we were, I did submit us to Apple and we were uh, accepted. But here's the thing, uh, you know, a lot of stuff goes on, I guess, quote unquote, behind the scenes when you are an Apple podcast. There, there, there's a hosting site. There's uh, all this stuff. And, um, you know, you're, you're granted room and bandwidth, all this stuff. And uh, that was uh, stuff that I apparently was unprepared for because I was the one doing all that. And uh, apparently there's also money involved as well. And while uh, Shelby here was actually going to bankroll, so to speak, the, the, um, the, the money that we needed for the Apple podcast, it was just something that we're not even for sure if this is going to catch on. I mean, like, we're not even cracking 100 views on the YouTube and such. We're getting there, though. You know, I think last week's episode was our most listened to episode there. So we're getting there. So um, I went ahead and removed us from Apple because, I mean, uh, I was going to go ahead and pony up the money for us to continue on Apple. But they wanted a, a one large sum payment right up front. Uh, and that was just something I cannot do. And that's when Shelby was like, I'll do it. Because, uh, you know, this again, this is not our full time gig. You know, uh, Shelby works full time. Uh, I work. Uh, Nick is uh, still recovering, I believe, from a car accident he had a year and a half yeah. ago now. Two and a half. Oh, is it two and a half? Has it really been two years? Long fucking yep. time. <laughs> oh, my God. I thought that was like a year and a half, man. No. So, I mean, this is not like our full time thing. So it's just not something, you know, we don't, you know, now if we're getting like two, three, four hundred views a week on the show, maybe. You know, maybe maybe something we pump money into and see what happens. But and also not really uh, an update, so to speak. But I just want to mention a little something that happened last night. I, I kind of told you guys about it, but I I, I want to mention it to him because I'm actually gonna go on my other Facebook account. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send them this and let them know that I talked about it. Um, but as as some guys know here, I've been uh, got, I've gotten into collecting wrestling autographs, and there are many. <laughs> see, they already know where I'm going. There are many. Uh, great groups on Facebook uh, that you can go and collect these autographs. I mean, you have uh, Sky High Memorabilia and Signatures. You have Superstar, uh, signed by Superstars. And I recently just bought from a Big Time Wrestling. I believe that's the name of the group. Uh, <laughs> plus, there's some I haven't even got to go to yet. But uh, there was one that uh, I haven't really known much about them last night, so I figured I'd, I'd tune in. And that was a Gimmick Tree, Gimmick Tree Entertainment or Gimmick Tree Wrestling. I don't know. I don't really their name because they suck. Um, <laughs> he did like the whole show with a fucking pencil in his mouth. And I said, the whole show is like, okay, <laughs> guys. So this is what I have up next for Vic. So we're going to do it. So um, all of these shows that I go into, they know I have a dark sense of humor. So uh, they recently had Sid, Sid Justice, for a live signing. And uh, I went in there and asked if they had the. Uh, the the Sid sign scissors. Uh, Try and say that five times fast. I know Sid sign scissors. 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 Hey, there we go. Hey, you did it. I know, right? Um, <laughs> which, uh, if anybody knows the story, there was a once an argument between Arn Anderson and Sid, and uh, Arn Anderson stabbed that fucker a lot with a pair of scissors. Uh, so therein lies the dark joke. Well, this guy did not take very kindly to the joke and right away wanted to kick me from his room. So I right away deleted the comment. I was like, okay, my dark humor is not going to be appreciated here. Okay. So I waited a couple minutes and was like, all right, you know what? Let me, let me apologize. Cause I might want to do business here. You know, you know, they had some cool stuff. They had a, 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 a Jack's honky tonk man, like the ringside collector, like the, the, like oh. the ringside edition honky tonk man still in the package. So I was like, oh, I might want to bid on that. So I was like, all right, you know what? So I, I left a message saying, hey, man, it was just a joke. Apparently it didn't go over. My apologies. You know, and the guy looked at the comment and he said, oh, OK. You know, so I was like, oh, OK, we're, we're all square, you know. So the guy starts selling figures, classic figures and such. I was like, you know what? 
there's there's actually a classic figure I've been wanting. You know, I've been wanting the classic Andy Kaufman figure for like eons. So I, I typed in there. I was like, hey, you wouldn't happen to have the classic Andy Kaufman figure laying around, do you? This motherfucker blocked me over the Sid Scissors comment. And I was just like, really, asshole? You got that butthurt about it. <laughs> wow. I, I can understand if I message them before. Yeah, I can understand if I messaged him like beforehand and it was just like, hey, tell Sid to have a great show and to break a leg. You know, then I can understand him being a little upset. You know? <laughs> Even then, it's still <laughs> stupid. Like, <laughs> like every room that I've done the Sid Scissors jokes in has gone over. Like, I think the uh, big time wrestling, the first time I whipped that out, and they were just like, no, we don't have Sid Scissors, but we do have the Arn Anderson squeegee. Yeah. <laughs> 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 see, you see, <laughs> that guy got it. Big time wrestling got it. So, uh, Gimmick Tree Entertainment or Gimmick Tree Wrestling, whatever the fuck your stupid fucking Facebook page is, whatever. Yeah, you did the whole show like this anyway with a fucking pencil in your mouth where nobody can understand you. Um, whatever, you know. Uh, fuck it. I just wanted to tell that story because it was just stupid. You got no fucking butter <laughs> over it. Like you were fucking Sid's husband or some shit, or Sid's wife. <laughs> Maybe he's his fluffer. <laughs> Sid's fluffer? Oh my god. All right. So there's nice little bonus stories there. Uh, Apple update and the gimmick tree story. So let's get into the news cycles here. And I, uh, I actually add a little extra story there just in case because sometimes we go a little short with some of the stories here so the first one i want to talk about here is our favorite tag team team titties has uh, finally won the wwe women's tag team titles and what's interesting from that story is that tamina after 11 years in the wwe has finally won her first piece of wwe gold so um i know i I don't think shelby's a big fan of either of the women's tag team titles but I know Nick is. Uh, we're at least a fan of the WWE ones, at least. Uh, so, yeah. Nick, how, how are we feeling about Team Titties, as we like to call them? Uh, I, watched, uh, uh, I saw the match on uh, was it Friday. Yeah, it was Friday. Yeah. Um, I, I, I enjoyed the match. I was glad to see them win. Uh, mm-hmm. It's cool to think that Tamina's initial debut was as ballet for the Usos. Mm-hmm. As they went to take out the Hart Dynasty, as they were valeted by Natalia, so it's kind of it's kind of a neat little kind of wrap up, a little story yeah. in a bow there. And now they're tag champions together. And I think that versus all the other tag teams in the women's division right now, or lack thereof, mm-hmm. I think they were probably the best choice to have belts or to be Shayna and Nia. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, I love Nia Jax as much as the, the next person. I know she doesn't have a lot of fans out there, but I I mean, I've said it once, I've said it again. She has pretty eyes, I love the hair, and shit like that. That's probably why I like Nia Jax. But uh, I think it was time to get the, the titles off of those two. I think it, it was about time. And um, if it wasn't going to be Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose, which it, it seemed like they were teasing that for a while, then I'm glad it was Tamina and Natalia, because... Uh, Especially Tamina, because for uh, to, how she hasn't landed uh, a pink slip, you know, is beyond me. Again, not to say that there's anything against Tamina. I'm just surprised that she's made it 11 years in the company and hasn't landed herself in the unemployment line. So I'm glad that they're finally giving her something. See, I think about her being there 11 years and not landing in the unemployment line. But every time I do, I remember who her family is. And I'm like, oh, well. Yeah. So, uh, Natalia and Tamina for AK Team Titties. This one's for you. All right. So let's get on to the next bit of news here, and that is some pay per view news. Uh, Hell in a Cell looks like it's going to be swapping dates with Extreme Rules. Yeah. Uh, Money in the bank. No. No. No, usually yeah. Extreme Rules takes place next, and Hell in a Cell takes place in October. And now it's going to be Extreme Rules in October, and Hell in a Cell in June. I yeah, because Money in the Bank Hell usually in happens Cell. in July. But I thought I, I thought I read Hell in a Cell June, Extreme yeah. Rules July, Money mm-hmm. in the Bank. October. No, Money, oh, no, money in the because Bank. Because they could July. have more fans 
in October versus than in July. Well, well, fucker, you read wrong <laughs> because it's going to be in it, Money in the Bank is July and Extreme Rules is going to be in October. Fair enough. And that means we're getting the horror show <laughs> um, at Extreme Rules. And that's again. a drink, I believe. Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> we're not playing the fair enough drinking game tonight. Oh, I thought that was every podcast. <laughs> I that thought that only applied podcast. for Shelby, though. Yeah, and that rule only applies to you, really. Oh. You're the one that uses it all the fuck time. This is true. This is true. Uh, uh, so the question is, like, uh, I- I'm kind of used to Hell in a Cell being in October. Like, when I saw the commercial for it during Backlash, and don't mention anything about Backlash, we'll get to Backlash. But when I saw the commercial for it during Backlash, I was just like, why are they already pimping out Hell in a Cell? That's not till fucking October. And then it was just like June 20th. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I don't like these gimmick pay-per-views. I just don't. Like, Hell in a Cell should be something that you work to. (laughs) Instead of having it, like, you know, at a certain time every year, and I know the date's switching, but to have, like, a whole pay-per-view that's themed Hell in a Cell, it doesn't feel that special anymore. It just feels like another match. Well, I mean, it could, I mean, it could be worse. It could be every match inside Hell in a Cell. Well, this is true. And, I mean, they've done, what's the most they've done? Three in one night? Yeah, three. Yeah, that's that's too much. Two's too much. Which Two is we're too probably much. No. no. Well, you just you kind of kill it. Is too much. <laughs> what? The damn red cell is too. Oh, much. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. They should just go I back to the old school classic so, steel. Yeah, that yeah. That red thing. That red I don't know thing, the red. The, the red. Like... The red doesn't bother me, but whatever. the red gives me the uh, the terror dome vibe. Vibe. TNA, like mm-hmm. whatever that thing was. Yeah, the terror dome. The, it looked like a jungle gym on a playground. Yeah, terror dome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the terror dome. That's what it gives oh, okay. me the vibe of. Hell in the Cell. I mean, I just question what matches they're putting in there because, like, oh. I think oh. I know Side one. note, though, I do want to mention that Money in the Bank, they said they are debating about having fans, which disappoints me because that means they're we're not going to see money in the bank inside wwe headquarters again and i gotta say that disappoints me i don't think that needs to be done again i always I think that was knew a good that was going to be a i'm gonna get a lot of that i think <laughs> <laughs> Every going show. On a limb. i love the, the the money in the bank inside wwe headquarters i thought it was a lot of fun Telling you, it was a lot of fun year. but how do you it was a lot of fun, but there's only so many times you can go to that well. That's more. We've already seen the inside now. Yeah, but there, why do we need to WWE see? WWE headquarters is a huge fucking building. I'm pretty sure there's yeah, why? many, many places they did not go in that building. Look, I don't think we need it in the building again. And let's remember, Otis won the match by catching the briefcase. He caught it. He didn't <laughs> climb the ladder. He caught it. We knew that whoever was thrown off the top, I even forget that at this point, landed on... Alistair Black and Rey Mysterio. They landed on splash pads. Not splash. Whatever those are. Crash mats or whatever they call them. Oh, man, they died. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that was, Cause that, um, that's what happens when you throw somebody off a fucking roof. They died. Yeah, but I mean, but what was the what was the thing they used? They they landed it was on like, an uh, external it, it, ledge. Yeah, yeah, something like that. It was only which like I still don't know if I do that bump. Just the fact that you're getting thrown over the side of the building, I don't know, man. That's when I'm like done. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, without actually seeing it, we don't really know. But even if they just like made something to catch them for that one purpose and then took it off the next day, there's no way I'm taking that bump. I'm not trusting anything. Alrighty, so let's move on to uh, I. This one I found kind of interesting, so I just want to hear, excuse me, your guys' opinion on it. That is, uh, Jinder Mahal was uh, actually interviewed, and. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know if it was uh, sour grapes slash, uh, you know, butthurt, uh, but he believes that his WWE title reign was not as, quote, celebrated as uh, Drew McIntyre's. It shouldn't uh, because, be celebrated. He was a heel. Well, no, I mean, by which I mean they share a similar story. Jinder Mahal started in WWE, was let go, 
came back, became WWE champion. Drew McIntyre started WWE, didn't really go anywhere, was let go, came back, became WWE champion, and now, like, Drew McIntyre is one of the faces of the company where Jinder Mahal kind of was, you know, goes kind of like, well, there's a viewer question that kind of relates to this later. But uh, so my, I guess my question to y'all is, do, do y'all think that in also one of his quotes is that he laid the blueprint for Drew, Drew McIntyre's title reign? Do you guys agree with that? No. No. Not a chance. No. Hmm. So I'm not taking did. anything away from Jinder Mahal, but not a chance. Jinder Mahal was given the championship on the basis of an expansion to India, which did not happen at the time. Ratings fell short continued to fall short. He could not portray the role of champion after being off TV for that long. That's why they took it off him before Survivor Series. As they had built Mahal versus Lesnar, they took it off of Mahal. There's a reason why he dropped back down the card. He was given the ball to run with it. He didn't quite run. It was like a slow jog. Back into the way in the land of WWE, where like in terms of storylines, McIntyre, the storyline was always he was the chosen one. He didn't live up to that. He was gone. Well, he was gone. He did what he could to climb back up the ladder. Went through NXT, won the NXT Championship, came to the main roster, dealt with all the crap again to get to the Rumble, eliminate Brock from the Rumble, and go on to be Brock at WrestleMania. The story, like. You cannot compare the storylines, and because in WWE lore, the storyline is what matters, their gender is out of line in this. Okay. I say that like he's going to listen to it. But no, <laughs> well, I'm just, I was just curious what you guys, because I read yeah. that, and I was like, that's an interesting way to look at Because in a way, I mean, it's kind of right. Like when Jinder Mahal left, came back, became WWE champion, which was out of nowhere. You know, but like when Drew McIntyre did it, oh, people were like, oh my God, he was fired and came back and now he's WWE champion. People like act like it was the second coming of Christ. But when Jinder Mahal did it, it was just like, oh my God, Jinder Mahal's champion. Oh, holy shit. How did See, this happen? You like, said it right oh. there. He won it out of nowhere. That was another problem. They didn't build him. He moved to yeah, SmackDown. Exactly. He won That's like, was it a battle royal or something? No, it was, uh, it was six, a six pack six challenge. Way. Yeah, six, way, six yeah. pack. Okay, he wins a six pack challenge, and then all of a sudden he's basically WWE champion. It's like that didn't make any sense. With Drew McIntyre, like when, like Nick said, they built him up in NXT. They built him up on Raw. It took him a while to get there on Raw, but he yeah. got there. You know, he won the Royal Rumble. Did Jinder Mahal win a Royal Rumble? No, Jinder Mahal has a WWE title reign and United States title reign. That's all I can really think of off the top of my head. 24-7 title ring. Yeah, because that counts. <laughs> <laughs> so does Rob Gronkowski. Yeah. And, and that old Spice Bonnie. guy. Yeah. You know, it's not... He at least works for the company. He at least trains in NXT. Yeah. Give not him not taking anything away from Jinder Mahal and whatever, but that... Yeah, yeah. I, I disagree with I'm that. I'm taking something away from Jinder Mahal. <laughs> 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 Damn! <laughs> Did Jinder Mahal like big kill your shanky. dog or something? Or I'm a big, big shanky beard? <laughs> Did Jinder Mahal kill your dog or something? Like, damn, man! I don't like have bad a dog. Jinder Mahal here. I don't have a dog. I just don't like Jinder Mahal. I Jinder Mahal have... pissed in his cornflakes this morning. I eat frosted uh, flakes. Thank you. <laughs> and some rare, uh, some rare AAA news on here. Uh, announced today. Andrade, former WWE superstar, will be challenging yes. for the Triple A Mega Championship at Triple Mania. What is it, fourteen now? Sure, I can't remember which Triple Mania. It is. I saw it and I don't remember. Like I saw the post. Yeah, I saw the number two, but I can't remember. But the next Triple Mania, we'll say Andrade will be challenging for the Triple A uh, Mega Championship against Kenny Omega, and uh, I'm excited for this match. I'm curious what you yeah. guys think about this match. Because um, you guys are pretty anti Omega. I love me some Andrade. I was like, I oh, I hope Andrade whoops his ass and takes the belt, and that's the start of the fall of belt collection. So regardless starts, of what happens, whoever wins, whoever loses, and I think I think this is going to be a pretty pretty good match, regardless. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It probably as won't be as like good eight. as. It won't be no Omega or Kata, but it's going to be... As much as I hate McFingerbang, it's... McFingerbang. No. 
McFingerman. He's just so. Yeah. No, I'll he agree over with that. Acts. He's over I, on, Andrade I should. Oh. Andrade should win. I don't watch a lot of AAA. I probably won't go out of my way to watch this match. Whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah, probably. But no, they should. they they've built him as Andrade. He's allowed to use the Andrade name. He just can't. Uh, from what I've read, he's allowed to use the Andrade Almas name, but he can't use the CN. Well, they didn't fucking use it in WWE really anyway. So yeah. Well, they <laughs> used it for a little while, but then it yeah. just wasn't. It wasn't working. It's kind of stupid, Andrade. That's all it needs to be, right? Yeah. He should win. I mean, this he wore. He used to wear a mask too. He didn't yeah. The sombra. So if he's going to be Andrade, I think it'd be kind of cool just to be Andrade and not wear the mask, and you know. But and yeah, then when he was Andrade, he would wear a mask like in his entrance. Yeah, then, yeah, at like special events, like takeovers yeah. and shit. And uh, speaking of Andrade, his uh, quote unquote former business associate uh, Zelina Vega might be gearing up for a return to the WWE. As uh, publicly known, she was fired, not released, not. Uh, she left on her own accord, not, hey, goodbye, everybody, I gotta go. She was fucking fired uh, back in, last May, I believe, uh, due to her wanting to continue to do Twitch, uh, OnlyFans, and Cameo. Uh, and the ironic thing about it is, is that she's been inactive on Twitch for three months now. Um, so, uh, Zelina Vega coming back, uh, yay or nay? Yay. Yay. Conditionally, yay if she is put with Alistair Black. Nah. They would have to do a lot of. I mean, like. Alistair Black doesn't really need a manager, nonetheless. Yeah. Like, he doesn't need a mouthpiece. He's a baby face, have, is he not? No. Have you is seen the recent Finn yet? Yeah, he's, he's still coming back as heel, yeah. Oh, okay. No, I haven't actually. I mean, if he's a heel, then it could work, but. I don't know. I don't really see Selena and Alist Alistair Black. Would you prefer her go with Garza again and just be ruined? And then I would prefer her to just be Zelina Vega. I would prefer her to be just Zelina Vega by herself in a singles competitor. Go to NXT. NXT could be good. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I can work with that. Okay. Yeah. All right, and news coming out of the Evolution. God. No, I'm kidding. I just want to hear a reaction. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, but uh, the last <laughs> Eva Marie. Yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and uh, the last bit of news here, uh, probably one of the, the I I thought would be bigger news coming out of the weekend, but it's kind of been slept on a little bit. But uh, guys, we lost a real one this weekend. Oh nah. man, <laughs> we lost real we one. lost we lost New Jack this weekend. New Jack, uh, 58 years old, uh, apparently died of a heart attack this weekend in his home in North Carolina, uh, a.k.a. real name Jerome Young, uh, known for his super violence in ECW, uh, role in Beyond the Mat, where he attempted to become an actor for a little bit. Um, so, New Jack, gone. Uh, I guess, memories of New Jack. Because the funny thing is, we we just referenced New Jack. I think that we referenced New Jack on like the last three shows. I think. Oh, because we were yeah, talking about the Eric thing. Young thing. <laughs> yeah, the Shark or, Boy thing. Shark yeah. Boy, sorry. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, I, I. I don't know. It. He wasn't a good man. I'm not gonna feel sorry for him. He did a lot of stupid things. Um, oh, oh. but holy shit, was he over as a heel? Just a bad motherfucker. That's for sure. One of my favorite New Jack things ever uh, was a long time ago, like before, you know, podcasting was like even like, I believe was like the word podcasting was even in the vernacular was uh, there was this uh, Internet show called Reality of Wrestling that I used to listen to. And it was hosted by a guy named Chris Cash and his uh, co-host, Nick. Uh, I, forgot, I forgot his last name, but I know the co-host name is Nick. And uh, every week they would, uh, you know do a wrestling show kind of like we're doing now but they would have a guest and one week they were gonna have new jack and they would do like some bullshit before then they'd bring their guest in and so forth like that well they had the funny idea before bringing new jack on if uh they could call new jack the n-word 
for fun. <laughs> okay. So they went to the ad break and they're like, hey, when we come back from the ad break, you know, we'll have New Jack on. So the ad break comes, they come back <laughs> and Chris Cash, the host, is sitting there and he is just like, yeah, so uh, we're supposed to have New Jack now. But uh, something happened during the ad break. And what happened during the ad break is that they called New Jack for the interview, you know, at their designated time. And they asked him, like, hey, you know, like, we think it'd be funny on air if, uh, you know, I called you the N-word just for fun, blah, 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 ha, ha, ha. <laughs> well, if anybody knows New Jack and has seen his shoots or anything like that, New Jack did not take very kindly to this idea. <laughs> Why would they even say think of that? <laughs> so, <laughs> of course so he's not going to like it. Now, I, this this clip used to be online, but now it's gone, and I'm pissed that I can never find it. But what happened next was great, because New Jack hangs up on him. So the host calls back, Chris Cash, and he's just like, you know, like, hey, we, you know, are we still going to do this interview? He's like, this, and New Jack says, see, this is why I don't give out my phone number to people like you. Click and hangs up again, <laughs> you know? So obviously New Jack wants nothing to do with this interview anymore. You know, so finally, Chris Cash calls back again. And what happens next is probably the greatest thing I've ever heard on the Internet by a wrestler. And that is he calls again, and he's just like um, and New Jack just says, yeah. And <clears throat> Chris Cash is like, is this how you're going to be now? And he's just like, listen to me. And New Jack says, listen to me, you fucking Mark. This is why I don't give my phone number out. You want to call me and ask, hey, New Jack, can we call you the N-word on the radio because we've been drinking all day? Listen to me, you fucking Mark. Don't ever call me again. Go fuck your mother and have retarded children. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, I mean, like, I didn't know a lot about New Jack at the time, but after that, I became, like, the biggest New Jack fan. <laughs> Because that was, oh like, the greatest thing I ever heard. Because he said, That's go incredible. fuck your mother and have retarded children. Which was, like, <laughs> how I, I, like how do you come... Like, if, if you're in an argument with somebody and somebody says that to you, like, what, what do you come back with? Like, <laughs> yeah. gay lord? Like, what do, what do y'all be like, what do you come back yeah. with after that? Yeah, what's your comeback? Um, yeah, so, Jesus like, that, that is, like, my favorite New Jack, like, moment ever. I mean, he had great shoot interviews. Uh, I, I will say some of his matches. I will say I don't re really remember any of his matches. He was just great. Neither do I. Yeah, his his shoot interviews were great to listen to. Uh, <laughs> the stuff with Shark Boy, like I mentioned before, awesome stuff. Uh, yeah. I mean, Shelby has a different opinion, but I I think we lost a real one. We lost an OG and New what Jack. One of my uh, one of the best things I ever saw involving New Jack was it was a, a three per, there was three of them in the shoot. It was New Jack, Honky Tonk Man, mm. and the Iron Sheik. Okay. And they were talking about how I guess they, they were having a party or something, or it was after a show, like an indie show or a signing or like a WrestleCon or something. And uh, New Jack and Honky Tonk Man. I were trying to mess with the Iron Sheik, so they hit its crack pipe, and <laughs> and the, so they're talking about this story about how they were like, Sheik was freaking out because he couldn't find his pipe. New Jack and Honky Tonk Man had hid it under the bed, but then they forgot where they put it, so they couldn't tell him where they put it. Months later, like they had a call or something like that. They found this pipe, like from the hotel chain, that they found this pipe, wondering if they wanted to claim it. Like it was this like glassware with this like funky design. It had this weird residue in it. They didn't know what it was. How the hell uh, do you not know? <laughs> well, I mean, if you're an innocent hotel, like I guess I don't know. Crack pipe, like, just I don't know. It was just so funny though. Like <laughs> Sheik freaks out. He's just like you fuckers. You hear my pipe, everything go crazy. I have no rock. Da, 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 <laughs> new Jack say, what the fuck? This motherfucker, we hit his pipe, and then we forgot where it was. And months later, it just kept going. Oh. Well, and then I remember reaction. that interview. The only interview, I, the only thing I remember from that interview is the interviewer like coughing and like honky tonk man just kept offering the interviewer, like, hey, you want to hit this Gatorade right here? You want to hit this? <laughs> 
I don't know why. Now, like whenever I like whenever I say like, "Hey, you want to hit this diet coke?" I'm referring to that. <laughs> uh, but damn it! Uh, regardless of what Shelby says, god damn it, I'm gonna miss New Jack, man. The Dark Side All of the right. Ring episode was good too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so that was the news for the week there. A little couple extra stories there. So now it's time to go on to our favorite game, and that is It Came From eBay! Yes! Oh, yes, It Came From eBay, our favorite game. Yeah, okay, calm down. Okay. All right. So let's find some here. All right, so this one right here. Do you guys remember the uh, the WWF Bendums? Oh, What? Yeah. The Bendums, like the little rubber. They were like the oh, action, okay. They were like the little rubber toys. Yeah. Well, this right here is a WWF cane Bendum, but this is actually a rare Bendum because sometimes when you got the Bendums, all you got was just your Bendum action figure, and like if you cut out the back of the the card, you got like a little trading card. This is one of the rare ones because this is a WWF cane Bendum, but it was one of the ones that came with gear because this actually came with a plastic ladder. Oh, so Shelby, how much is the 1990, I believe, nine 1999 WWF Kane Benham with ladder sealed in package, bent on card, going for on eBay? 100 bucks. 100 bucks. Nick, how much is the Kane Benham with ladder going for on eBay? Shit, see, the, the WWF toy market is something I haven't delved into yet. Uh, shit. 200 200 uh shelby you actually get it it's actually 79.99 damn really yeah which i was actually still surprised by because i was just like i I know the the ones with like the the gear with it like a chair or ladder were like rarer to come by but like i was like still 80 bucks damn all right and the next one here i want to do you know what, since, since y'all were really off on the toys here, let's do another toy. And that is, if you guys remember the Hasbro uh, mm-hmm. figures, of course, everybody knows the Hasbro ones. This is a WWF mint on card, green card, which is one of the rarer ones. The green card, Billy Gunn, Hasbro. Billy Gunn, Hasbro one. Now, I believe the green card is like one of the last ones they did, the yellow series was the absolute last one. So I think the green one was the one before the last one. So uh, Nick, WWF, mint on card, green card, Billy Gunn, Hasbro, how much is that going for on eBay? See, it, it, what sucks for me right now is I've seen, I watch a lot of collector stuff on YouTube, and there mm-hmm. was, there's one that has done a series on these. Um, damn. Uh, 75. All right. Shelby, Billy Gunn, green card, Hasbro. How much are you going for? 50 bucks. 30? 50. 50. All right. Uh, Nick, you get that one because he is actually going for $380. Wow. Now, right now, you guys are tied one to one, and I want to make a uh, correction from last week. Last week, I actually gave. Shut up. I actually gave Nick a point last week when it was actually Shelby who got the point and actually won the game last week. So the official tally for our episodes here is actually six to two. Shelby's still losing, but Shelby could win the game here because we are going on to our big item of the week, which is the ass blaster. <laughs> All right. And I would stick with the toy one here, but I want I want to do this because I just want to say what I want to say at the end here, and that is so this week's big item here is uh, this week's item is a Kelly Kelly worn gear. It's a top, bottom, and belt. It is not signed, hmm. but it's Kelly Kelly ring worn gear. It's a yellow top. Uh, you get the top, the bottom, and her belt. So, Shelby, how much is the Kelly Kelly ring-worn gear going for on eBay? $1,000. All right. And, Nick, Kelly Kelly ring-worn yellow gear. You get a top, bottom, and belt. How much is it going for on eBay? I really hate that I'm about to say this, but $5,500. $5,500. Shelby. Yeah. Up six yeah. three. 
because uh, the the gear is actually only going for one thousand and fifty dollars. Which uh, what I wanted to say was, if you pay for this, you are overpaying by about one thousand twenty five dollars. Yep. Yep. Because she is not Ugh. worth. It. All right. So that was it. Came from eBay, and now. We want to talk about WrestleMania Backlash, but before we talk about WrestleMania Backlash, we got to give a shout out to one of our sponsors, and that is RepSports.com. And RepSports.com, you know who RepSports.com is. Uh, I do. I think I've heard of them. I know, right? They've only been in every episode. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and what RepSports.com is, they have plenty of products there, like they have the Broken Arrow pre-workout they have the raise energy liquid in cans they also have the powder where if you don't want to buy it in cans you can just get the powder mix it in with water they also have the hyper sleep that puts you down nice and easy for a good night's sleep plus they also have hats t-shirts all that good stuff and if you go over to repsports.com right now and use my checkout code artist you will save 15 percent on anything so you can get cases of raise energy drink you can get your broken arrow pre-workout get you motivated for a nice workout you can get the hyper sleep if you're having trouble sleeping like last night last night i could have used some hyper sleep because i laid down to go to bed at around 11 o'clock last night i didn't fall asleep till like 3 30 so i could have probably used some hyper sleep last night but you know but uh, I could have went over to repsports.com, use checkout code artist, say 15% on some hypersleep, and uh, it would have still did me no good because it would have took a couple of days for it to deliver. But <laughs> I, could have, I could have had it for next time it happens. What's so, that checkout code? It is. <laughs> that checkout code is artist, A R T I S T. And when you use it, you will save 15% on your entire purchase. So check out repsports.com today. All right, so let's get into the pay-per-view that we just had on Sunday. That is WrestleMania Backlash. Hell and yeah. And we only had six matches, right? That's what I remember. Uh, Yeah. Okay. Yep. Just, just making sure I had all my notes right. All right, so the first match of the night was the Raw Women's Championship match, a triple threat match between Charlotte, Asuka, and Rhea Ripley. So what do we think? Where was Charlotte? I saw her music. I saw somebody walk out to it, but that wasn't Charlotte Flair. Oh my god! <laughs> For a second, I was like, "What? What is that?" <laughs> Seriously, how much fucking like plastic surgery has she had? She does not look anything similar to like when I was watching point. regularly. <laughs> but why? That's you will not point, talk about man. my angel. <laughs> when I wrote the vote, my my the... literal notes for this match is Charlotte. Yum, yum, yum. Hey, you know what? I'm not going to disagree. She looks good, See, but she me, does not was... look like the killer that she used to look like. For me, it was that plus why did Rhea just win? Why? Because she had to and yeah. should. Yeah. yeah I, I Who mean, the hell was going to okay, win? Yeah, Char wait. Charlotte? Charlotte, yeah. Cause the, then what was the point of giving the title to Ripley in the first place? Exactly. Because like I saw, it was an audible for Charlotte, damn it. Yeah, but I saw nobody <laughs> I saw nobody winning that match but Rhea Ripley. Eh. If you were betting well, money on that match and you bet against Rhea Ripley, you deserve to lose the money. Oh, fair enough. But overall, I did. I, I wrote Charlotte, yum, yum, yum. But <laughs> I also wrote next to it, good match. It was, it was a pretty stellar match. Yeah, it was very spotty. That's what triple threats are. They're just spot shows. But it was st it was still a good match, though. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot more because going into WrestleMania Backlash, I was just like, "This is gonna be dog shit." But when this match started the show, I was like, "Okay, cool." And then Corella Deville came out, which I was like, "All right, yum." Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, "All right, let me get my lubricant." Um, <laughs> too much input. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, you know, I was like, "Wow, this is actually a better match than I really anticipated." So, two and a half women. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Your, your your hatred for Oscar just just my hatred for the way that she's portrayed. I don't like the weird laughy crap. <laughs> but it's. Uh... Uh... <laughs> 
So, uh, but overall, did we did we like the match? Did, did we think it was good? It was, it was the better of the triple threats. Really, you think so? See, I, I don't. Just, I don't know if I dis, it, if I'd agree with that. I just get really bored with Scottish Seamus and Black Lesnar and oh! Doctor Shrill. Yeah, I'm sorry. Before we. Yeah, you mentioned Scott Seamus. I remember pre-show was uh, Seamus and Ricochet. Either of you guys watch that? No. 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 <laughs> no. All right. Well, okay. Well, we went that. All right. So, the next match was uh, uh, the Dirty Dogs. Robert Rude. Why is that their name? I don't know. Why are they the Dirty they Dogs? One? No, they didn't. If if anything, if they were going to give them a name, it should be the Glorious Show-Offs or something stupid like that. Or why but not? Or why honestly, not? Or why not Rudolph? R O O D. Yeah, that would work too. But even just you Rude know, and Ziggler. The Dirty Dogs is better than that. Nah, I don't know about that. Whatever. All right. Anyway, yeah. it's the Dirty Dogs taking on Dominic and Rey Mysterio for the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And I got to be honest, there's two matches on this card that I fast forwarded. This this was one of them. And oh, at first I was man. really confused. Dude, at first, I was really confused. I was fast forwarding. I was like, "Damn, they're just not tagging in Dominic." And then, apparently, during the pre-show, he was attacked. And well, they showed it just before there. the match, too. Well, because I fast forwarded. Yeah, I love this match. Um, so uh, you guys, or one of you two, apparently saw this match. So, what did you guys think of this glorified handicap match? I thought it was great. They were they were really doing like they were getting great heat, you know. Um, Ziggler grabbed Mysterio's arm and went to tag in Mysterio's partner. He's like, oh, yeah, you don't have a partner. Ah, ha, ha, ha. And it was a lot of, you know, just the heels getting their heat. And, you know, Mysterio or Dominic came in and got the tag a little early. Uh, Mysterio was selling really well. Miss, uh, Dominic came in, got the beat down. He got beat down and he tagged into Ray. Anyways, it finished with uh, Dominic hitting the frog splash. Uh, which that I did to work I, on that frog splash a little bit. Usually, if I fast forward a match, I'll at least watch the finish so I can see what happens. But Dominic came in way too early because he is not able to work with these guys as well as they work with each other. This was Rey Mysterio. This is a great match for Rey Mysterio. He's working. He, you know, he's just he was getting beat the whole time. He was selling. It was. I loved it, man. I really did. Really? Yeah. I, 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 my I second favorite for, match on the show. I wait for the breakup angle with Dominic Frank. Honestly, they shouldn't have the belts for more than a month. I, I don't even that's, think they. I, I don't think here. they should have won them here. That's what I wrote here. I wrote fast forwarded. Title run won't last long. But when Mysterio came out, I was kind of waiting for RVD. What? Not because I thought they would continually have them as tag team champions, but he just went in the Hall of Fame. And I thought it would have been kind of cool to see him and Mysterio tag against the Dirty Dogs and then, you know, have them lose somehow, some way. You know, maybe even Dominic. That doesn't even make any sense. Why not? No. Why not? One, there's no fans. Two, uh, none of today, nobody, uh, nobody of the general people that watch today even know that Mysterio and Bad Dam were tag team champions. We're to then have them lose would be ridiculous too. Plus, you have no. They could have done a disqualification on. finish. They could have done a count out yeah, finish. But still, why, why bother at that point? <clears throat> I, I liked it. Through? I did like it the way it is. Uh, second favorite match on the show. Okay. Then the wheelbarrow fame master that uh, they do should be their finish. Famous. Here, here, here's my impression of like Shelby ever meeting Bobby Roode. Okay, you ready for this? <laughs> hey man, he's glorious for a reason. That was Shelby sucking Bobby Roode's dick, by the way, just for the people at home. Um, okay, so the next match here, I actually have some shit to say. Uh, it was Bianca Belair defending the SmackDown Women's Championship against Bayley. Now, I bet people are, are like, oh, this is the second match you skipped. No, it isn't, because I was like, you know what? Let, let's see if she can change my mind. I'm actually going to sit and watch this fucking match. You know? 
So I sit and watch the match, which uh, eventually Bianca Belair wins with a roll-up, try and use her hair, which she botches. And the only note that I wrote down next to it, I wrote, Bianca Belair should have skipped the match. I wrote, uh, how many people jerk off on cam? What the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know those, like, you know the Thunder (laughs) Dome. Somebody doesn't realize they're on cam and all of a sudden they're just stroking it. Anyways, that was my thought. Of um, course you think about that. <laughs> I, uh, Usually I didn't that's mind. my line, but I just... <laughs> well, like, I I did... was like, you know what? Uh, I was like, all right, let me sit and watch this match. Maybe this will be the match that changes my mind on Bianca Belair. Maybe I was wrong the whole time. Maybe, no. maybe there is something there. And I watched this whole fucking match from beginning to end. I didn't fast forward. I think the only thing I fast forwarded was the fucking entrances because I was like, whatever, don't care. You know, but then I watched the whole match and I was just like, fuck, I, sh- I should have just skipped it. Because like, I, 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 I mean, Bailey did a fine job. I mean, you know, but I, that, after the bell rang and Bianca won, that, that was my first thought was like, I should have just skipped this. Yeah. I, I didn't hate this match. I thought Be- Belair did. Does I think Bella is a little bit better than than you believe she is. She's still not one of my favorites. I'm still not a big fan of her, but I mean she's in that spot. Um, when it comes to the finish, when it comes to the finish, I think what she was trying to do was I think she was trying to grab the leg. I wonder if her like, hair was slipping the way she was holding it, and when she missed the leg, it just kind of looked like Bailey kicked out. But I don't think Bailey's shoulders came off the mat. She was trying to tie up her feet and, like, not hog tire, but she was trying to tie up her feet with her hair to, like, secure her legs. Right. And it just came off horribly. It it was an interesting spot. It's not something I really want to see again, but... Apparently, there's talk it will lead to hair versus hair. And Bailey loses, I guess. Hmm. Well, no, they can't. Can, can we can we do can we do fire versus fire where like the the, the loser gets set on fire and Bianca Belair loses? Can we do Isn't that? Isn't that an infernal match? Yeah, it's basically no. But I mean, match. like for real, like they, like at the end, you have to douse yourself in gasoline and then just like light a match and fucking we just kill Bianca Belair on television. Can we do that? No. Yeah. no. <laughs> do you have any idea how many like rules and things that would break and like? <laughs> <laughs> it would piss off the shareholders. It would piss off the fans who are already in the hall. Maybe, uh, maybe they, maybe Bianca Belair and Bailey can uh, do a Hell in a Cell. Then, like at the end, like they can hang Bianca Belair, like a la Boss Man. Do an exploding barbed wire death match. If they ever have an explosion again. at the match, mm-hmm. after the match, and then after the explosion, no more Bianca Belair. Good. Uh, shit, just have tiny little pieces of Bel Air throughout the arena. No, I don't know. They can replicate. <laughs> they can replicate her hair, her like her, her whip or whatever, and her ponytail, whatever that her braid. And I have trouble with facial no. amenities and things today. Apparently, no. I just, I just want to throw hot grease on her and watch her scream. I just don't like her, and I de- like. I just, she looks like she's like 13. And she acts like a two. Yeah, it's it's kind of like the Naomi thing, too, with the way they come to the ring and, you know, all the dancing and shit. I'm just, I don't really like that, but people. That's 10 years out of date. Yeah. That's the only issue I have with that. That's 10 years out of date. I, I do believe she is over, and I do believe people like her, and I think she can go. I'm just not a big fan of the overall. How is she over? <laughs> I just want to fucking throw breadcrumbs on her and watch pigeon I'm eat her. I just... I can't see ball. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, uh, next one. Yeah. If we weren't miserable before, we're going to get even more miserable. Oh, oh, no. So, miserable. the next match right. is uh, Damian Priest versus The Miz. No, the next match was last year versus Strowman versus McIntyre. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, that other match never happened. Plus, I'm pretty sure it was before the women's match. But <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. It did happen, and we have to talk about it. But the next match was Damien Priest versus The Miz in a lumberjack match. But instead of all the 24-7 guys, 
Which uh, is the, what it should have been. W- which we got Monday. Uh, but instead of it being the 24-7, guys, we got a interpromotional tie-in with the Netflix movie Army of the Dead. I can't believe I'm even saying this. Um, I'd rather be saying, like, oh, Capital Combat. Oh, like, Capital Combat fucking Robocop makes more sense than this. Um, the interpromotional tie-in, instead of WWE wrestlers being lumberjacks, the lumberjacks were zombies from the upcoming motion picture, Army of the Dead, debuting on Netflix on May 21st. Um, and they, 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 they went all out for this in, in a sense that WWE goes all out because they changed the whole arena. They, uh, they had whoever, uh, whoever these zombies were, like when Miz and Priest would go outside the ring, they they had the the zombies almost attack them like they were going to eat them. Um, I just wrote down zombies, comma, why, question mark, and need I say more? Because promotion, that's why. <sighs> why it's pretty sad say? that the best thing about that whole segment was Damien Priest doing the arrow to the fucking sky and the army of the dead thing shows up. I thought that was pretty cool. Other than that, I, I could have cared less. This was the second match of fast forwarded. Yeah. I can well, only I, imagine. Like once I, once I found out that the zombies were going to be lumberjacks, I was just like, well, okay, I'm done. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much. That <sighs> was, like, I mean, could... I still think the fireball was worse in my opinion, but this was the fireball. Could they not? Yeah. This was, fire- the fireball from fucking fast lane. Oh yeah. When 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 you when you mentioned this this match, you didn't say the match. You just you you sent that fucking meme. I thought that this was a Bray Wyatt thing. I did not realize that this was fucking the Miz and and Damian Priest's match. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what bothers me more about the whole thing: the fact that they use zombies, the fact that they tied in with Netflix of all things, the fact that they didn't use the zombie character from ECW. Uh, <laughs> they were. Really? He's dead. Yeah, the guy who played him is dead. Oh. Well, yeah, I mean, they're all dead. No, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. At, least, at least put somebody, dress somebody up like him and be like, oh, hey, we know that guy. Yeah. Apparently, Scotty Too Hotty was one of the zombies. Really? Oh, well, that's well. Okay, that makes me feel a little bad. That poor bad. No, do not defend this in any way. I, I feel bad people, for the Miz. I feel I've bad for people, Scotty Too Hotty. I have heard people try and defend this segment, and there there is nothing to defend here. I feel bad for Damian Priest and his push. He goes from helping Bad Bunny to playing with zombies. <laughs> And now Miz is hurt. <laughs> for the first time, you know, for the first, yeah, I, I was going to put this in the news cycle, but then I knew we'd get to zombies before then. So that's why I put it in the news cycle. So, yeah, for the first time in 11 or 12 years of his career, he has legitimately hurt himself. He tore his ACL. Um, <laughs> so somewhere right now, Aaron's throwing a party, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> With Twinkies. With Twinkies, you know. Star With Crunch. Twinkies. Oh, yeah. Um, but I just... I, you know, if they, if they wanted to do the tie-in to the Army of the Dead, okay, let, let's say we could not change whoever's decision this was. You know, like, hey, maybe we shouldn't do this. And they're like, we have to. Okay, fine. Did they have to come in and quote-unquote eat the Miz at the end? I can't believe that's the real question you just asked. Like, did they have to? <laughs> I couldn't have just been zombie lumberjack and just call it a day. Yeah, yeah. That that's... would have been too easy. Yeah. I just I don't I don't I don't understand. Yeah. A- anything else to say about this segment? 
No, let's move on. All right. The next match here for the WWE Championship, a triple threat match. Uh, Bobby Yay. Lashley defending against uh, Drew McIntyre. And, and the choo-choo train. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Braun Strowman. <laughs> to the ring I, I, by I, I, his I conductor. Have, I, I actually have some stuff to say about this match. Uh, like, when it started, uh, like, going into it, this was one of those matches where going into it, I was just like, ah, shit. You know, like, whatever. You know? Yeah. But yeah. when the bell rang and they started going 100 miles per hour, I was like, holy shit. You know? And it actually ended up being a way better match than I expected. Like, I, I me personally, the, this was the, the the match of the night, personally. Uh, with with Charlotte, uh, with Corella Deville and shit right behind it, <laughs> um, you know, just for the separate reasons, but um, but yeah, I I thought this match was like way better than anticipated. I I mean, again, this is one of those matches where like if you bet against Bobby Lashley, then I mean you deserve to lose. You're an money. idiot. Yeah, yeah, you know, you deserve to lose the money. Uh, but it was still overall a great match. I, I, I had way more fun with this match than I anticipated. I like the uh, the double suplex spot on Strowman. I thought that was really cool. Um, I just couldn't get over the speed they were working at. That's what got they were They were working speed. fast, but again, it's it's a spot fest, and I'm not personally a big fan of those. Um, I did think it was a decent match. It had the right result, but... Um, I think that he should have pinned McIntyre instead because I don't really want to see Lashley and McIntyre again. Not that I really want to see Lashley and Strowman anymore, but just to switch things up, I'd rather see Lashley Strowman than Lashley McIntyre. Well, it looks like we might be getting Lashley Kingston. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, I did hear about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kofi Mania, too. Nah, he shouldn't beat Lashley. Six seconds. <gasps> <laughs> okay, twelve. No, that was the boo was for Shelby on that one. Oh. Yeah, I figured as much. <laughs> Nick, your thoughts on the triple threat? I'm bored with Scott or Sheamus. He needs to go away the for a right, while. He needs to go to SmackDown. Is where he needs to go. No, take him off TV for at least six months. Why? Are y'all repackage are y'all him? Getting, bring him back. Um, are y'all getting Cena slash Roman Reigns effect from him? He, you know what? You, uh, what's the famous line? How can I miss you if you won't go away? Yeah. You know? Hmm. Braun, I feel like, needs a drastic change of character. Braun needs to just leave that promotion and go somewhere else because they've ruined him. Absolutely they, ruined they, him. They need to go drastic. Shave him. And have no, him play. no, no. Grow the hair back. Oh, I forgot to write that note down. Grow your fucking hair back. <laughs> every time every time I get excited when I see his hair being grown back, I was like, oh, thank God he's growing it back out again. Then, like, the fucking three weeks later, he's bald again. I'm like, look, you fucking bald bastard. I <laughs> stop fucking shaving your head. I just pitch you. Big show sit- now? I just picture you sitting ringside at a live event in the next year and Strowman's out there. Shave your head, you big bastard. <laughs> it just pisses me off. It was like when Tommaso was like fucking growing his hair. I'm just like, oh, God. Yeah. Now it's like the inverse with, with Strowman. Like, I can understand when he shaved his head for his swamp fight against with Bray because, like, I think there was like an actual reason behind that, like, why he <laughs> shaved his head. But, like, now it's just, it just looks fucking weird, you know? And I'm fucking over it. I'm over, I'm, I don't, what is that, like, an unspoken rule in WWE? Like, if you shave your head, that's it? It has to stay that way? You're not allowed to grow it back out? Unless you're fucking Vince McMahon? Give yeah. him a pink mohawk. It's so funny. Just, like, think. massive mohawk. Done. What? Give him, give him fucking hair. I don't care. Give him a gimmick that isn't a train. Give him hair and shave. <laughs> give him hair. He diet doesn't purple. need a gimmick. He's already a giant. Give him hair, dye it purple, shave the word smut into the back of his head. I don't give a fuck. Just give him uh, hair. Did you say smut, smut or slut? Smut. Big smut. <laughs> big smut. 
Because, like, I think three times now, like, he started growing hair back, and then he shaved it off again. I'm like, yes. look, sir, you're pissing me off. BS doesn't stand for Braun Strowman anymore. BS stands for Big Smut. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. He's the new world's largest love machine. And he just starts gyrating. <laughs> I, in honesty, though, I mean, like, I, I think, you know, to, to Shelby's uh, credit, you know, in all seriousness, to Shelby's credit, where they're like, they've ruined the character. I think they ruined it when he went against Lesnar in Saudi Arabia. Oh, boy, yeah. He should have won that. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think once, because, like, I, I, I'm pretty sure there's a meme floating around about it out there, but, like, I think, like, in Elimination Chamber, like, Everybody in the elimination chamber hit their finish on him, and he kicked out. But then, like one F five kept him down. Yeah, the F five is a brutal move. Shut up! You, you... <gasps> I'm gonna start being the heel of this podcast. I think. <laughs> but like, you know, I, I think that's the match that really started Strowman's like downward spiral, so to speak. Was that match in Saudi Arabia? What is it about Saudi Arabia that starts people downward spiral? You had Braun Strowman, you had Ricochet. Mm-hmm. Michaels. Yeah. I Titus. Mean, yeah, Titus, yeah. So, all right. So, let's move on to the main event, which was yeah. Roman Reigns with that boss ass theme music. Yeah. Uh, defending the Universal Championship in his first ever main event and singles world title match, Cesaro. What did we think? Of this match. fucking great match yeah absolutely phenomenal the selling in this it was just off the charts the arm the leg you know the the finish to it with the with the guillotine choke and cesaro not tapping out passing mm. out that leaves so much for them in the future and i think that they should hold this off till SummerSlam, and cesaro should win i think you're wrong because what happened afterwards yeah. Well, Seth yes. Rollins, Seth Rollins came out and attacked Cesaro. And I didn't write it down here, but the first, when I saw it, the first thought that came to mind went after Seth Rollins came out and beat the shit out of Cesaro. I, I think I even said it out loud. I either thought or I said it out loud, even though like I watched this shit by myself. I said it out loud and I, I was like, well, welcome back to the mid card. I don't think so. No. I think I think they're going to have a Hell in a Cell match. And this was the match I was talking about earlier. But um, I think they're going to have Hell in a Cell match. I think Cesaro wins that match. And then, I mean, I don't know whether they will go this route, but I think then you start building to SummerSlam where Cesaro challenges Roman Reigns again. And it doesn't need a gimmick, but you could throw a gimmick at it if you really wanted to. It could be two out of three falls. It could be submissions only. Who the fuck knows? Mm. And Cesaro wins. This and that's, is how... you know. Go ahead. How I see it going is you've had Rollins now. The Rollins has been involved in with the Uso stuff and that drama. I'm thinking we're going to have a triple threat at SummerSlam between Rollins, ah. Reigns, and Cesaro. How we get there. Hell in the Cell is a Hell in the Cell match between Cesaro and Rollins. Reigns has the night off. Ah, the, so Usos, the Usos have a match versus each other that night. We get to SummerSlam where we then have a triple threat. Cesaro wins the title by pinning Rollins after Reigns gets upset when Jay walks out with Jimmy. Leading to the drama within Reigns and Uso. Cesaro now has the belt with a fresh chaser, like the heel chase in Rollins, and we make money. See, that all sounds like, you know, rainbows and lollipops and shit, but I, I stand by my statement. Cesaro, I love you, but welcome back to the mid card, buddy. I hope not. Really yeah, cool. same. Especially that but, was like I mean, his but coming also, out party. Though, but, but I will say, but also, if it, if he doesn't go back to the mid card, 
let, let's say that Cesaro is back in the mid card. Let's say Vince's mindset is like, okay, we gave him a shot in the main event, whatever. Who's next for Reigns if it's not Cesaro? Big E. Fair enough. Okay. So that was so overall. Uh, let's do scale of one to ten. What would you give WrestleMania Backlash? Well, because there was no bullshit fuckery matches on this show, I would probably give it an eight. There was no bullshit fuckery matches? Did, did yeah, you that, watch the same show? Yeah, yeah. There was a women's match, and then it went to the triple threat for the WWE Championship. There was nothing in between. Because of the bullshit fuckery, I only give it a five. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I mainly only like the, the two triple threat matches, and I, I, <laughs> yeah, I'll just say five. I'll just say halfway. I disagree with Shelby. Whatever. Because the bullshit fuckery, I'll give it a six. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so that was WrestleMania Backlash. So next up, we're going to do our Sports to List of the Week. But before we talk about our Sports to List of the Week, we got to give a shout out to another one of our sponsors. And that is HardToFindTV.com and their sister site, FanMadeDVD.com. And uh, what those sites are is a great little site where if you loved an old TV show from the past or a very obscure TV show from the past. Like, have you guys ever heard of the show Oliver Bean? Hmm. Does ring a bell, actually, to tell you the truth. Yeah, it was part of uh, Fox's Sunday night lineup a long time ago, about like early 2000s. It was like on before Simpsons and such like that. Really underrated, funny show. But if you're looking for that show on DVD, it, it, you're not going to be able to find it you know, on an official DVD, but the good people over at hardtofindtv.com and fanmadedvd.com can get that on a DVD for you and at an excellent price as well. And that's why they sponsored the show. And if you go over to either one of those websites and use my checkout code artist, you will save 15% on that website. And they have hundreds, literal hundreds of titles to choose from. Uh, if you go over to hardtofindtv.com, you can use Amazon Pay and check out easily on their website. If you don't want to use Amazon Pay, you can go over to fanmadedvd.com and, again, choose from the hundreds of titles they have on that website. And you can use PayPal, you can use credit cards, uh, you can use whatever they offer. And, again, if you're looking on that website, through all the hundreds of titles that they offer, and you're just like, they still don't have anything I want, which, come on, that'd be almost impossible. That'll uh, never happen. <laughs> uh, just email them a title that you're looking for, and more than likely, they will hunt down that title, and they will get it to you for a fair price. You know, And as always, what I like to say, if they don't have it, you don't need it. So again, hardtofindtv.com and fanmadedvd.com. Uh, use my checkout code ARTIST, A-R-T-I-S-T, at checkout, and save 15 percent all right so the sports that listen a week last week we talked about uh gimmick matches and i really like that so um we're gonna do it again but uh, a little bit of a twist on it here and this week we're going to talk about 10 bad gimmick matches and the wrestlers associated with them mm -hmm. so coming in at number 10 the ambrose asylum with <laughs> Dean Ambrose, <laughs> aka the most boring cage weapons match ever created. Yeah, like who would have thought a weapons cage match could be this fucking boring? I remember watching that, and right after it finished, being like, "That's it. That sucked." <laughs> like the only thing good that was what? the only thing that I can really remember about is the thumbtack spot that was really yeah. entertaining. Other than that, like I, yeah. I got. Nothing. The memes. The memes. <laughs> was there only one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought there was two for some reason. No. God, I couldn't sit through a second one. <laughs> the production team probably couldn't sit through a second one either, let's be honest. Oh, no, for sure. Wow. Kevin Dunn would enjoy it. Yeah, um, <laughs> well, this is what wrestling is all about. <laughs> no, it's not wrestling. 
Well, Jim, we're not a wrestling company. <laughs> this is sports entertainment. That's what it's all about. It's out of five people. We're not a wrestling company. There has only been one of these matches, and sadly, it wasn't a good one. What should have been a frantic and aggressive brawl turned into a sluggish, slow, slow-paced, and very long match ended up being quite boring. See, I, I, see, and I, I said what I said before reading that. So that, that almost <laughs> matches what I said. Yeah, pretty uh, much. Okay, number nine. Oh, they went old school with this one. I don't know if you you two may have seen this match, but number nine, the King of the Road match. With the, wrestler <laughs> the wrestler associated being Dustin Rhodes. Fuck. What a stupid concept. <laughs> What's that up? Did you guys awesome. wrestle on a fucking 18-wheeler while it goes 50 kilometers an hour down the road? <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I, I like this match. Yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> I did, too. Oh god! I, I just think like if they tried this match today, they could definitely make it better. Because like I, I mean, really, if you think about it, the camera <clears throat> angles is what really screwed it up. And like, I mean, at the time they didn't allow blood, and they busted each other open. And I think that's what really again was the camera angle thing. They had to do a lot of camera angles to hide the blood and everything. But I think I, I, I think today they could probably get away with this match if they tried something like it. Yeah, don't worry, AEW will do it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, the bout was pre-taped and saw the two men fighting in a cage filled with hay while being driven around. It was a mess with poor camera shots and sloppy wrestling that made this one that made this one nobody cared about seeing. Again. How much money would that cost to produce too? Because now you got to send a crew outside to not only film a moving vehicle, but you got to block off streets so that you don't like run into intersections and like you got to yeah. have the cops like you know, uh, escorting you, like, how much would that cost to produce? Mm. I think it was Ballpark? Like hey, you Canadians, might get, you Canadians might get this one. Ballpark? A hell of a lot. You uncultured swine. <laughs> I was going to say swing and a miss. That's a corner gas reference. Oh, yeah, that's why. I should have got all right, coming in at number eight, we talked about this match last week, and that is Kennel from Hell with Al Snow. <laughs> yeah, it's another one. Uh, All the poop. <laughs> there's just shit everywhere. There's just shit all <laughs> over the place. Shit. There's shit. Okay. All right. We, we said about that last week. Uh, <laughs> coming in at number seven, the Kiss My Foot match with Jerry Lawler. What? Really? Why? Oh, uh, let's see here. Speaking of gimmick matches that require people to kiss body parts, the Kiss My Foot match is another terrible gimmick that WWE has used. Jerry Lawler has competed in this stipulation twice. First to Bret Hart, and then again, and then against Michael Cole. Neither time did this neither time was this an effective gimmick match. Sure, it was embarrassing to have someone to have to kiss someone's foot, but it doesn't make an exciting match. It's a stipulation nobody's looking forward to, wow. forward to watching, and sadly for Lawler, he's been involved twice. I'm pretty sure he lost to Brett. I don't know if he lost to Cole. Yeah, he, lo- he lost to Brett. I, think like, I, I disagree with that one. I think it fits the gimmick, though, when it yeah, comes big to time. King Ex- Lawler. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. The humiliation and, of having like the way that he built that up with the match with Brett, like even before the match, the backstage interviews where he's like pulling off the dirty old sock and yeah, and you like know, put his foot in like nasty ass, like whatever. Yeah, yeah, the way that he built that was just so good. Not everybody could do that. I wouldn't want to see Steve Austin do that. I wouldn't want to see, you know, uh, Kenny Omega or fucking Seth Rollins do that, but it worked for Jerry's gimmick. Plus, plus, because Bret Hart shoved Lawler's foot into his own mouth, that led to the introduction of Isaac Yankum DDS. All right, of course. I mean, you can't go wrong there. Wrestling dentist. Hello. <laughs> All right. Coming in at number six, the hog pin match. But the wrestler associated with this kind of throws me for a loop. And that is Triple H. Oh, fuck. <laughs> they had it. It was an in-your-house, wasn't it? 
Yeah, it says, however, yeah. it is Triple H that fans associate with this one. The match is done to embarrass the wrestler who loses, but considering both of them get covered in mud, that doesn't make sense. Plus, the actual action is never any good due to the fact that they're stuck in mud. Well, I mean... Oh. There's, uh, there's like, rumor and innu- innuendo that that match was basically made for Triple H to... They would, like it was after the curtain call, so it was like part of his fucking yeah. Uh, which I call it? I don't know okay. what the word I'm looking for is punishment. Okay, Conrad. All right. <laughs> I've always said that something the wrestle with should change their name to uh, rumored in your window. Yeah, <laughs> rumored in your window. That's all he fucking says. Yeah, it should no longer be called something the rest of it. it should be called rumor in your window. That should be the name. Because <laughs> he doesn't say that, and something ridiculous that, or Bruce thinks something ridiculous is said that Bruce jumps on him. <laughs> <laughs> all right, coming in at number five, brawl for all with Bart Gunn. Yeah, no, that was stupid. That was really <laughs> stupid. Let's have shoot fight matches in a wrestling ring and nobody's going to fucking believe it. Not to mention most of these guys aren't shoot fighters. You can't predict the winner, though you think Steve Williams is going to win and he doesn't and you fuck everybody. (laughs) That match did not, that that tournament did not make any stars. But you have, this is probably one of the rare times that, you know, you probably have to agree with Vince Russo with when Bart Gunn won, they should have strapped a rocket to him because, like, I mean, there it is. He won a legitimate tough man contest. So, yeah. boom, you should have strapped a rocket to him and just blasted him to the stars. But instead, they're just like, yeah, he kind of won. Yeah, we'll do something with him. And they did well, nothing. He won, and then they made him face Butterbean. Like, why would you do that? Well, it was a dark, punishment for winning. But Dark Side <laughs> of the Ring kind of like – or it was it Dark Side of the Ring or something to wrestle yeah. with? One of the two. It was one of the two that said that when he went up against Butterbean – you know, they were training him to be a boxer, not a fighter. So Bart they, Gunn went in Bart Gunn went in the butterbean like with like boxing on his mind and shit. They were having a boxing fight. No, they were doing a brawl for all where you could do takedowns and shit like that. Yeah. Bart Gunn went in there to box. But Butterbean wasn't a fucking fighter. Like he was yes, just a was. boxer. Was he? Yep. Yeah. I thought he was just a boxer. Oh no, he does it. He did it all, man. He did MMA. He did boxing. Yeah. He did, yeah, man. Mm-hmm. He did. They, they, they shouldn't have had him. They shouldn't even had him go in the ring with with Butterbean. Oh they yeah, really I agree. Should. Don't get me wrong. I, I yeah. agree. They shouldn't have had it, but I, I think even further when they train him to be a boxer against somebody like Butterbean, they, they set him even more up for failure. I think if they would have yeah. just said, "Hey, go in there with Butterbean and like you know do a brawl for all, do what you did in the brawl for all." It could have been a little different. It probably would have lasted a little longer. I mean, even Butterbean was even able to work with him. He even went to WWE and said, hey, so how do you want to work this? Because he was even able, willing to work it. Yep. You know, and they're just yeah, like, no, yeah. go, out there and beat, go out there and beat the shit out of him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, if if, I, I just if Mark think Gunn it, got him to the ground, Butterbean might have lost. I, I just think... It, you know, if Bart Gunn actually won this tough man comedy, I mean, yes, you know, the the, the bar, Brawl for All tournament itself was boring as fuck. I'm not going to sit here and defend the tournament itself. But since Bart Gunn won it, I think they could have did something with him. Mm-hmm. You know, he was the Genetti of the smoking guns, but this was like, okay, shit, he won this tournament. Maybe he's not the Genetti. Maybe we can do something with him, but they didn't. No. You know? They, they could have done so much, too. Like, Yeah. Ugh. All right, coming in at number four, the one and only member TLC. Well, one year they had TL- tables, ladders, chairs, and stairs. The <laughs> stairs match with Big Show. No. <laughs> stupid ass match. Stupid ass Big yeah. Show. Yeah. Stupid ass pay per view. Hey, man, don't make fun of Big Show. Big Show's cool shit. See, I just, I just hate because like, Captain Insano. I just hate it because like <laughs> Eric Rowan, like when they first split up the Wyatt family, I don't know what it was, but I was just like, I think Eric Rowan can make some weird kooky face character, and that's what they went with it. They were like, all right, we're gonna make him a face. I was like, oh my god, they're gonna do this. I think this is this is gonna work. And then they're like, steel stairs match, and I was like, and there it goes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was so close to being right. 
He could have been like a weird, like Festus type gimmick. Maybe not exactly like Festus, but I think mm-hmm. you get what I'm going for. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody just helps him to the ring, and when the bell rings, he just goes insane. <laughs> or he's just like, I don't know, like, if he like carried him. No, nah, man, a Heidenreich. Like, That's what we need a Heidenreich. Uh, just have him read poems to Michael Cole while he's behind him. Very. Yeah, I, I can I can kind of see where Shelby's going with that, like a Heidenreich type of character with Rowan as a face. I can, I can see that. Yeah, I could see that. I was yeah. kind of making a joke. <laughs> All right, coming in at number three is blank on a pole matches. Vince Russo. Oh, Judy Bagwell. <laughs> that was a forklift. You what? On a pole matches. That was a forklift. <laughs> okay, but that was because they had to put her on a forklift. Come on. And the funny thing is, my vintage pick of the week is a pole match. <laughs> <laughs> pole match. It, it is a blank on a pole match. <laughs> <laughs> they can be okay depending on what's on the pole. Pinata, pinata. Okay, pinata. Yeah, they had the pinata on a pole match in WCW. They had bad uh, Viagra on a pole match. Oh lord. Yeah, WCW. see, that's that's the kind of shit that like shouldn't be in a wrestling pole match. Like flags make sense, you know. I don't know about a title. It, it, the problem is like. It's just too easy to like run over there and grab it when your opponent is down for like thirty seconds. Or three I, seconds. I, I I wrote one when I used to write fantasy wrestling. I wrote one title on a pole match, and like let's just say that there's a reason why I only wrote one. Yeah, you know, because like I was just like, what the fuck do I do with this? Yeah, you know, like uh, that's exactly how Vince it. Russo was able to come up with so many pole matches. I'll I'll never know. It's Vince Russo uh, is a kite. Coming in at number two is the Punjabi prison match with Great yeah. Khali. Talked about that last week. So. <laughs> All right, coming in at number one is the Kiss Me Arse match with Sheamus. It's just a Kiss My Ass match. Why? <laughs> was, was Jeff Hardy in that match? No, uh, Dolph Ziggler, I believe. Kiss Me Arse match. Sheamus simply refused to do the job, which made the entire match pointless as he took out Ziggler afterward and made him do the kiss him instead. Kiss me arse. Oh, uh, see, the funniest part about that whole, well, the best part about that, rather, is Sheamus saying, you're going to kiss me arse. <laughs> like, I mean, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I think out of all these matches, though, if one needs to make a comeback, it's King of the Road. Oh, yeah. 100%. Dustin Rhodes, QT Marshall, Dynamite. Put him in the back <laughs> lot at Daly's place. Let's go. Come on, Tony Khan. Book it. I'd watch. Or no, 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 no. QT Marshall, Anthony Agogo, and uh, Nick Camarado versus Cody, Dustin, one of the guns, and put on the King of the Road. There we go. Why yeah. one of the guns? Because they're doing this whole like faction war with the Nightmare Family and the Nightmare Factory. Do well, they yeah, have a hundred factions yet? Wouldn't it make more sense for Cody, Dustin, and um? All right, fine. Fuck it. One of the guns. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, because like pretty much because like they took. Well, let's see. Lee Johnson's on his own. Uh. Aaron Solo is with QT. Nick Camarado is with, uh, or Nick Cordero, whatever. Camarado is with uh, QT. Anthony Agogo is with QT. And then Cody's got the guns. And he's got uh, uh, Dustin. And I think that's it. Hmm. Okay. All right. Fair enough. On Rebel, but I. Like, Speaking, oh, you know, speaking of Rebel, I just want to mention this on Monday. Did, did, did anybody notice fucking Nikki Cross out there with the Lumberjacks on Monday? Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Why is Nikki Cross just chilling out there with the Lumberjacks? <laughs> she was at work, I guess. No, uh, like, what you want to be on Raw? <laughs> I bet you it was just like, okay, we need the Lumberjacks out there. And Nikki just snuck in. She was like, I'm getting some fucking airtime. I don't give a fuck. Just don't answer that phone, Nikki. That's my ass. <laughs> it's like, uh, here, take these crayons. But I have to go out too, damn it. <laughs> if you must. 
All right, so that was our Sportster list of the week there. Oh, got a message there. Facebook, sorry about that. All right, and Nick, it is now time for your Wrestling Fact of the Week here, um, which I should have did before Sports List of the Week, which I keep forgetting. Uh, but better late than never. So, uh, so Nick, hit us, with your, hit us with your fact, because, uh, again, we go into it blind. We have no idea what the hell you're about to tell us. So, Okay, you- so our fact of the week, and actually uh, this one I actually just learned from watching WWE's Most Wanted Treasures on AME, uh, the Booker T episode. So, back in December of 1997, on December 29th, there was a match for the WCW World Television Championship. Now, we know that Booker T went on to defeat Disco Inferno to win his first of six WCW TV titles that night. Yeah, I know. However, Booker T was not supposed to be in that match. That match was originally booked to be Disco Inferno defending versus Rick Martell. Rick Martell got to the arena and had forgotten his boots. Uh, subsequently, Booker T subbed in, went on to main event show, win the match, and watch his singles career. That, well, we know who Booker T is today, obviously. Yeah, because I remember that night. Because, like, I, I, you know, I, I'm a Disco Inferno mark. So, like, I remember at the time, Disco Inferno was the television champion just plowing through people. So, like, when Booker T came out, I was just like, oh, okay, so this is who he's going to plow through this week. But then, bam, Booker T, axe kick. And I was like, holy shit, Booker T is the television champion. And Wow, okay. And then uh, a couple weeks later is when Rick Martell finally showed up to WCW. And uh, um, he had a nice little run with WCW until that you know knee injury happened. You know, Because Rick Martell was killing it in WCW until that <laughs> knee injury happened, man. Yep. Wow. Rick Bartell oh, was I didn't, I, I, see, I, Yeah, I never knew that that he was uh, originally scheduled for that Booker T match because I remember watching that match live on television. Yeah, Booker was oh. a. That says they're looking for the TV title. That episode was really good. I do recommend checking that one out because that one was really good. Not that they all are, but that one was particularly good. Huh. I never knew that. All right, so that was our fact of the week, short and sweet and to the point. So let me pull up our viewer questions here. We got and, questions? I know, right? <laughs> and unfortunately, Nick, sorry, Brett did not leave a question this week. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, let me... Damn it. Trying to pause last week's episode, so... Okay. You know what? We'll just do it like this. Okay. Just do it. All right. Here we go. Uh, okay. So the first one here is coming from Stug138. He said, I recently watched You Cannot Kill David Arquette, which I am currently wearing the shirt for. <laughs> and I was wondering, what actor or actress do you think would be a good wrestler? Hmm. Well, considering, I mean, I've seen him wrestle before, and I think, like, if he were to stick to it, you know, uh, his wife is pretty much holding his balls in a purse there. But uh, I think Stephen Amell was doing pretty good in AEW before, you know. Oh, was it, was he yeah. on the, the first show? Yeah, the All oh, Out, he, the first All Out. Yeah, he had a match with uh, Daniels, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, Which yeah. Was like, you know, for like a Hollywood actor coming in against somebody on the caliber of Daniels, having the type of match he had, I was like, wow, I'm actually really impressed with somebody like Stephen Amell. So, um, I mean, he's no fucking David Arquette, but, um, I, I, I would watch more Stephen Amell matches. Like if they're, if they came out tomorrow and said Stephen Amell is all lead, I'm like, oh fuck, I'm in. Bad Bunny or Seth Green? Yeah, but Bad Bunny's another one. If they're like, we're signing Bad Bunny tomorrow to a development deal, I'm like, I want to watch that. Seth Green, I wanted to see more of. Yeah, Seth Green. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I don't think it'd be so much now, I guess, but, uh, back in his prime, I think, uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme might've been interesting. Oh. Or, uh, Chuck Norris in 94. Maybe Chuck Norris as well, yeah. Yeah. Chuck Norris coming in and, like, fucking up Ken Shamrock or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chuck, oh, 
That's the dream WrestleMania match right there. Ken Shamrock versus Chuck Norris Chuck in Norris. the Lions Den match. Oh. <laughs> Chuck Norris comes out and just whoops his ass. They... Comes out to the Walker Texas Rangers. Hey, theme. Scott Demore, call up Chuck Norris. You've already got Ken Shamrock working for you. Or Don Callis or whoever. <laughs> call up fucking Chuck Norris. Be like, hey, do you want to come in and like whoop Ken Shamrock's ass? For like two minutes on pay per view, we'll give you five hundred thousand dollars. Is that cool? All right. And like, oh man, that'd be sweet. <laughs> All right. Next one comes from Andrew here, and that is: Do you have any WrestleMania viewing traditions? Watch with the same friends or group each year. Eat specific food uh, each year while watching, etc. Um, I saw this question, and like, there I, I want to mention this: There was uh, for a time. Um, you know, we've mentioned before there there is a fourth one uh, that you know we've kind of well I've kind of separated from, but uh, Alex uh, for a while we used to get on Skype and uh, Alex usually would get the pay per view, and since you can share screen on Skype, he would share his screen screen his screen and me Nick uh, Shelby would and Alex we'd all watch the pay per view. We did that for like fucking years, man. Yeah. You know? And then we just kind of just, uh, I think life just got in the way of all of us and shit like that. Yeah. Um, so, like, that was, like, one of our traditions there for a while. But, like, uh, I think, like, when WrestleMania comes around, I tend to, I, I tend to fucking, even when I wasn't working at pizza, I tend to usually get a pizza when yeah. WrestleMania's done. And so I usually, I'm usually eating pizza when WrestleMania as well. That's usually how that goes. I even remember on one of the calls, we were, we all did. I think it was, was it? 28? Ross Cena 1? Yeah, it was once in a lifetime. I ate two whole pizzas. That was not... <laughs> during, the, during the span of... The show, so two during the span pizzas. of WrestleMania, I ate two medium pizzas. Ah, uh, medium is not so bad. I oh, yeah, yeah, that's that. not too bad. That's still... Pro- well, realistically is it more... is, but we could probably do it. <laughs> oh, I hurt after, man. It was yeah, bad. I bet. I bet. Oh. It was bad. <laughs> we got and I remember oh, uh, like, the oh. yeah once in a lifetime where um after that match like Alex just fucking lost his shit on why Rock won that match. Yep. That's yeah. when I was just finishing the pizza and I was like, all right, there's one more piece of green pepper. Now that's <laughs> gone, and I'm sitting there and Alex is freaking out, and then I just get the ooh, 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 ooh. I'm like, oh no. And then it just progressed from there. It's not nice. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, other than that, like, I mean, that was like our tradition for a while. Like, we, we, Alex would, usually, <laughs> he, would he would usually, he would buy WrestleMania, but then, uh, to be honest, he would bootleg the rest from like some weird website. And then he would share the screen and then we would watch that way. And then, um, then, like I said, pretty much life just got in the way and we stopped doing that. And then after that, it was just like, oh, fuck, if we if we watch a pay-per-view, we watch it. If we don't, we don't. Hardcore justice. Hardcore justice. Uh, um, <laughs> some of those old TNA pay-per-views were just so, so awful. I don't yeah. think we ever, I don't think we ever watched, we only watched WWE ones. No, we did watch TNA did we? pay-per-views. Yep. I don't remember watching any. I Me remember neither. watching, I remember it was a teenage, oh, what one was it? It was, um, I think it was Hardcore Justice, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I remember we watched one when they was a thing, and there was all the Jeff Hardy of S, they nonsense. Because huh. I, I distinctly remember getting into a very, I think it was, I think, uh, I don't know if... Maybe three out of four of us were on something, and we just got into talking about how ridiculous this they storyline was. The last one I remember watching, we were watching a SummerSlam. I can't remember which one it was, and I got really drunk. Was that the one with the sombrero? I can't remember. I remember yelling about Titus O'Neil's pink ass. That was the one with the sombrero. Mm, okay. Uh, it went from Titus and Nail's pink ass, and then all of a sudden, like, it was like a half hour later, you had found a sombrero, and then you got more into whatever you were drinking, 
and by the end, I think you would then decide that you better switch to Diet Coke. Yeah. And then I think you passed out. <laughs> no, there. Uh, we, uh, okay, we're going off topic here, but like there was that one time we, I don't think we were even watching a pay per view, but it was the first time I ever took Xanax. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Is that the mac and cheese incident? No, no, no. Is just the okay. DVD update. no yeah. remember you like at one time you you had like this fucking picture of like I don't know like a fucking bird or some shit. It was and, like, the I... picture of Shelby that the lunchbox drew for him. And you fuck... <laughs> oh. and I swear to God, I thought it was like holding flowers and then like I, I, I saw it like <laughs> flowers. And I was like fuck dude, I was fucking gone. Yeah, you were gone. I was gone. All right, all right. Uh, we'll save that for the stories. No one asked for a podcast. Yeah. Uh, next one coming from Andrew is, which Playboys featuring WWF slash E Divas did you cop back in the day when they when that collaboration was prevalent? Uh, the only one I actually ever really owned was uh, I think Tori Wilson's first one. Oh, I never owned one. Me neither, but, actually. Yeah, like all the rest, I think I saw like eventually like online later in life yeah but, like yeah. uh i think somebody in high school had the tory wilson one and he was like i don't want it no more do you want it and i was just like yeah. i don't know if that's something that i'd want to hand me down of <laughs> i don't know if that's something that a i'd want to hand me down of and b that i would then be sharing about damn <laughs> yes. No, no, all the pages were fine. It was nothing, you know. It wasn't like, hey, why are these pages sticking together? Oh. Hey, just because the pages were fine doesn't mean something wasn't done on that magazine. Fine. That's true, too. That's true, too. All right. What, is, what was your most, re- again from Andrew, what was your most rewatched WWF VHS that you owned or rented? Judgment Day 2003. Mine was The Rock. Um, oh, fuck, what was it called? It was a Rock VHS, and the only reason I watched it so much is because they uh, they showed the uh, the Rock and Triple H ladder match from SummerSlam. VHS specifically, not DVD? That's what it says, VHS. Oh, probably like a fucking Raw or a SmackDown that I taped. Damn. I think actually it was um, the Raw before WrestleMania 19. My grandmother taped it um for me and i had that tape for years and used to watch it a lot hmm. actually i, I could mention, probably name every match if i really tried <laughs> i used to watch see judgment day 2003 but it would get close with wrestlemania 3 i have a coliseum video clamshell vhs of wrestlemania 3 that i found in the Whitney market for three bucks yeah i think i think my second place would probably be wrestlemania 10 Yeah, WrestleMania 3, that VHS, I watched a lot. It was three bucks. I bought it at a flea market on a Saturday morning at 10 a.m. 2005. Damn. All right. Next one comes from Stug138, and that is, do you have a wrestling item that you regret buying? And if so, how much did it cost? Hmm. I don't think I do. I don't have that many items, though. I don't think I have uh, anything I, I regret, wrestling-wise. Money-wise, I regret buying the belt, but wrestling-wise, I don't. <laughs> I don't have any items. That said, I do have a gripe with the card subject to change issue. I bought okay. I, the only gripe I have with the ticket. It would be with the ticket for the Raw Hef show. Because going into it and still the day of their advertising came. came it, so. And we got the same main event with the exact same spots two mm-hmm. years after it had happened in the same building. Oh, okay, wait. I do. I, I I know mine. I went to, uh, I believe it was Eddie Guerrero's last pay-per-view, the No Mercy against Batista. And, um, uh, like, whenever I went to a WWF show, I, I just had to get something, you know, whether, you know, I was like, I just have to get something to know I was here. 
So the only thing that they really had that I wanted, it was remember the RKO shirt that was in the in the NWO letter form. Yeah. So they had that, but it was at the end of the end of the show. So like they didn't really have my size. So I was like, what size do you have? And they're like XL. At the time I was not an XL dude. So I was like, you know what? Fuck, I could probably get into an XL. So I was like, give me that. XL. Oh, I'll wear it. Nope. Never wore it. Just sat in my <laughs> fucking desk. Just sat in my fucking clothes and just collected dust. Paid 25 bucks for it. So that's Damn. probably the probably the item I regret. Yeah. All right, for this next one, I'm gonna read the question. But don't say your answer out loud because I think all three of us are gonna have the exact same answer. Okay. So I'm gonna read it, but don't say it out loud, okay? Looking back at the WWE slash F exclusively. Who is the oh this is from Andrew by the way? Who is the person you are still most surprised by that got a major title win? For me, I was blown away that Backlund had the world title in the 90s. I know he was a huge star prior, but he didn't seek to he didn't seem, I think is what he's trying to say. He didn't seem to fit the mold of a contemporary wrestler at the time. And as a kid watching then, I thought it was a joke. They were pulling on us. So do y'all have your answers in your head? Yep. Ever? That's what it says. Uh, yeah. Okay, we're going to say I'm on the count of three. Okay, All right. Ready? One, two, three. David, David Arquette. Arquette. Okay. Okay, it said WWF and WWE. When was fucking David Arquette WWF champion? Sorry. And Jinder Mahal. It's Roman. You ruined it. <laughs> Damn it, Shelby. Did you, you, say, I did you, you no say Jinder points. Mahal? I did yeah. say Jinder Mahal. See, I I, I, when I saw that question, I was like, we're all going to say Jinder Mahal. Yeah. Yeah. Except yeah. for fucking Shelby's stupid ass. <laughs> Not Bob Backlund, though. Even in that run that he had. So, Andrew, if you didn't hear us through all the confusion, we all say Jinder Mahal. <laughs> all right. And the last one here, Stug wants to get a little personal with us here. And that is, do you three have wives or girlfriends? If so, are they wrestling fans? If they are not, how do you feel about, how do they feel about you being huge wrestling fans? I think we can answer this one pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Very simple, but if you know anybody, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll go yeah, with that. Stug, if you know some people, one. yeah, Stug, if you know some people, and you know, <laughs> if they like big guys who like wrestling and with good credit, you know, tell them to call me. Um, <laughs> no, but like, like I will say, uh, the the baby mama, uh, she, the, the, oh god, this was hell on earth. Um, when you know the rest, when she first moved in with me, you know, first night, Monday night raw, the first Monday night raw together, you know, uh, you know, I'm sorry, but wrestling is just non negotiable. Like all the other shows are negotiable, you know, SmackDown, fucking AEW, whatever the fuck is on is negotiable, except for Monday night raw. Okay, I'm at least gonna attempt to watch it. Yeah, there might be a point where I'm like, fuck this, and I'll turn it off, but I'm at least gonna attempt to watch Monday night raw. Okay. So the first Monday Night Raw with the baby mama moving in uh, comes on. We're not even fucking, I don't know, it couldn't have been more than 10 minutes. You know, and it was the Raw after WrestleMania where Miz beat Wade Barrett for the Intercontinental title. So we get like 10 minutes into the show and they're having the WrestleMania rematch for this title. And um, she is not having it. She's not having this fucking wrestling bullshit. She's mad that she has to sit here and watch it. You know, and me, I don't give a shit. You're going to sit here and fucking watch it whether you like it or not. I don't give a fuck. You know? But, you know, I fucking I don't care. Go for a walk or something. I don't give a fuck. Whatever. So, um, then the loaded question happens. And she's like, "How?" no, two loaded questions happen. She's like, how long is this? I was like, what, the entire show? She says, yeah, it was like three hours. <laughs> And then she follows it up with, well, are we going to watch the whole thing? <laughs> oh. And I look at it, I was like, yeah. <laughs> and we sat there, and we watched the whole fucking thing, man. Until, but, like, she was not happy about it. And the, the the side note to it is that she eventually got into it. She eventually started getting her own favorites and shit. Like, she ended up liking Roman Reigns a lot. She ended up liking Daniel Bryan. She ended up liking huh? Cesaro. 
Um, like, she actually cried a little bit when Jack Swagger broke the fucking Andre the Giant Memorial Trophy that he won. <laughs> yeah. I remember what you told us about Yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like she she actually ended up getting into it, and then now she doesn't watch it because you know obviously she's not with me and shit. But uh, for a while she she was actually into it and shit like that. But 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 that first fucking Monday Night Raw, man, I I I do not condone domestic violence at all. But like that was the one time I just wanted to choke her. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! You know, I um I haven't made many people watch or many girl ex-girlfriends watch or girlfriends at the time i guess watch wrestling but the first time i met this one girl i did you know the um steve austin promo in ecw like when they're in the basement and he's just like talking about wcw and like all this other shit is that where he's steve mania no not the steve mania one this is just him talking about how he got screwed over in WCW oh, and how okay, Dusty okay. superstar Steve Austin. Yeah, I did that whole. Yeah, I did that whole promo to a girl, wow. <laughs> like word for word. <laughs> in case anybody wants to know the PS of that story, no, he did not get laid that night. No, but I did the night after. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. She was not a wrestling fan, as far as I know. <laughs> I think I think the baby mama was the only person I ever really converted to wrestling. Like I think like other people were just like, okay, you like wrestling, that that's fine. I'm like, hey, you should watch sometime. No, that's okay. That's pretty much <laughs> it. I mean, I've only met like one other person in like face to face other than Nick, who uh, actually likes wrestling. Like that's nobody true. I know really watches wrestling. Yeah, you like all, all like when I when back in like you know two thousand. All my friends watched it. I mean, Justice, like, you know, my buddy Justice, I mentioned, but, like, all of our friends at the time knew, like, I know you guys don't know these people, but just for context, like, Justice, Eric, Lisa, you know, this person, this person, this person, and then slowly throughout the years, like, 2001, like, Lisa and Eric didn't watch no more. Okay, fine. Then 2002 came, and Justice and this person don't watch no more. And then 2003 came, and it was this person and this person don't watch more. And I'm just like, what the fuck, man? Like, why aren't y'all watching anymore and shit? You know, yeah. and apparently Justice came back and shit, but all the rest eventually didn't and shit. And I just, I, it's just one of those things. I, I, I mean, I understand people have interests and they fall out of interest and shit like that. But like, I don't know. I guess it's just one of those things where, I don't know, you just, I don't know. I just didn't get it. You know? I still don't get it. <clears throat> I mean, I'm a diehard wrestling fan. So I yeah, guess exactly. that's. Yeah. You know? I mean, trust me, there's been times where, you know, like I said, I've gotten up in the middle of Raw when they're just like, okay, the night, or like, what what was the last, Fastlane, where they did Braun Strowman and Elias, where I'm like, okay, fine, whatever, the match sucked, but whatever. Then the next night on Raw, they're like, we're going to have a rematch, Braun Strowman versus Elias. I got up and turned the fucking TV off. I was like, I'm done. I'm not going to fucking sit here and watch this match again. And like, Raw started at like 7 my time, and it was like 8.30. There was still like half a show left. I was like, I don't care. Fucking, I, if, if I have to sit through this match again, I don't give a fuck. I'll turn the shit off. Yeah. You know? I'm die hard, but like, still, man, there's only so much yeah. a person can take. That's me I've, too, yeah. I've went through a lot of stints where I stopped watching, but I still pay attention. And lately, it's been like, I've stopped watching like, regularly, but I still mm -hmm. watch like, old stuff that I haven't seen before, just because I'm curious. My thing lately is I ship, so, like, one week I'll focus my attention most on AEW. I'll actually watch Dynamite on Raw to play in the background one week, something else, SmackDown, NXT, and so on. Next week I might flip to SmackDown, and I'll watch 20 minutes of AEW and all the bullshittery and fuckery <laughs> that happens on there, and next thing I know, I've switched to a rerun of forensic files. I delete the DVR file of Dynamite, read the results, shows I haven't missed anything anyway. Oh, we need fans back, man. I mean, like, yeah, up until the pandemic, like, every Wednesday night, I would get off and watch NXT and AEW, but then once the pandemic happened, I just couldn't take you know, empty arenas and shit like that. And then even when yeah. WWE was trying to put a couple people in there, I was just like, I still, I still can't do it. it. I mean, now it's just like, okay, like blood and guts. All right. Obviously I had to go watch blood and guts. 
Mm-hmm. You know, or like if they pimp something out, like okay, Chris Statland is returning. I'm like, okay, shit, I want to go watch the return Chris yeah. Statlander match. You know, uh, now it's just like it's very selective, unless it's like Raw, because like Monday I'm always home and shit. So I'm like, all right, well, fuck, seven o'clock, I'm home, fuck, might as well watch it until it pisses me off. <laughs> you know, SmackDown, I'm never home on fucking Friday, so it's just like whatever highlights. Yeah, you know, um, stupid night to put that show on. Like, you know, <laughs> I don't get it. Um, NXT, I could be watching NXT, but you know, we're doing this. You know. Yeah. But speaking of which, let's move on to that because that was the last question. Let's move on to our vintage pick of the week. And uh, speaking of vintage pick of the week, since we were talking about Vince Russo and his pole matches, um, last week we mentioned, or I mentioned on the Sports Solicitor Week, the Junkyard Invitational. From, uh, I believe it was Bash at the Beach 2000 or 99. I don't know one of those two. And um, Shelby and Nick said they, they didn't recall seeing it. So I was like, you know, I'm sure somebody has that on YouTube. Let me let me get it so they can see it. Nobody had it. So, but in looking it up, I, I found something. And I was just like, you know, I, I never seen this match. So let, let me watch it, you know. And it was from the last WCW Saturday night before they moved it to a Saturday morning recap show. <clears throat> and it was Brian Nobbs defending the Hardcore Championship against Norman Smiley, Dog, if y'all remember that gimmick, um, Rich, Rick Fuller, uh, Brian Aber, Abernon, I believe that's how you say his name, and some other job guy that I can't remember his name. Uh, it was a six-person hardcore, uh, hardcore title on a pole match from the last ever WCW Saturday night before they moved it to Saturday morning. And I was pleasantly surprised by this match. I had a lot of fun watching this match. It's, it's like only like six, seven minutes. But uh, I, I'm a big Brian Knobs mark. Same with Norman Smiley. Uh, but I had a lot of fun watching this match. So that's why I was like, oh, shit, I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta mention this on here tonight. I actually wrote it, sounds- it down so I wouldn't forget. It sounds really bizarre, but it sounds like actually like quite enjoyable. Yeah, I know. It's like I watched, like once I saw it in the listing, I was just like, I've never, I've never seen this. And then once it says Saturday night, and it was actually like the week before they did the WCW reboot with um, Bischoff and Russo. Oh yeah. So yeah, so I was just like, okay, and I was like, and like once I saw the job guys. Like uh, at, at Abernon or however his name is, and Rich. Once Rick Fuller walked out, I was like, "Oh, great! Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've picked a winner here." You know, huh. but then, but then Norman Smiley came out. You know, I was like, "Okay, well, Norman Smiley's always good." You know, but it, it was a fun little seven or eight minutes, however long it was. I I, I had fun watching. It. I I'd say at least watch it and check it out. Somebody All right, it. so my vintage pick of the week. Um, I'm not sure what the event was. Um, I think it was just like a random like superstars or maybe like a Saturday night. From 1991, it's The Undertaker versus The Ultimate Warrior in a body bag match. <laughs> nice. It's a very curious match to watch. Uh, wasn't, that, wasn't that just on the house shows? No, no, there, there is, um, the match itself is on YouTube. It was also included on, uh, the, the tombstone, the, uh, death, the Undertaker's deadliest matches, rather. Um, oh. yeah. I could have swore that was just on the house shows, but okay, hey, I'm wrong. <clears throat> so mine is going to be the British Bulldogs versus the Dream Team. From Saturday night's main event in 1986, before uh, they won the titles at WrestleMania. Um, oh. Great, great match. Uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, because I watched this match a couple days ago, but watching Backlash has kind of got my memory a little foggy. I think the finish came when uh, uh, Greg, Greg Valentine and Dynamite Kid were running the ropes, and they collided with each other, and Greg Valentine fell on top of Dynamite Kid only covering him with his legs for the win. And it was uh, it was a great... It was like a two-commercial match. It was a great match for Saturday Night's Main Event. 
Uh, Should have known you were going to pick some like eighties. <laughs> yeah, I'm back. Usually, to the 80s. usually I start with that joke, but last two times you're like, nope, not this time. So I was like, all right, I'll let him go this time. And then what do you know? You did it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, pretty much. All pretty right, much. So this is a vintage picks of the week. There, we all we all went pretty vintage. Uh, I think. Wait a minute. What was Nick's again? Oh yeah, from Superstar. Yeah, mine, like mine was mine was the latest at about ninety nine two thousand. Um, so yeah. So there's the bell. So we know what that means. That means it is the end of the three way dance this week. So join us next week here. If you guys have liked what you heard, leave some questions in the comments for next time. Read the screen because I I put a little note on the screen now saying leave some questions on there. I'm getting tired of leaving having to leave a little one minute video on like Sunday saying hey leave some questions. Um, it gets a Those little are funny though. Not really. <laughs> I don't know. I just I I, I well. I sense it. Um, but that'd be great if you leave some questions down below and uh, keep on listening because if uh, the if the listens or views I guess in this case go up, then uh, maybe uh maybe old uh penny bags here shoves will put some money into the show and uh, we'll get on Apple again and start really putting some money into this and then one day it'll be something one day it'll be cornet's drive through rumor innuendo three way dance you know hey you so, can't forget girl and jr or and, my world and someone will mention us on their podcast exactly. that's the dream right there that's the dream cornet giving a shit or something they call me <laughs> uncle corny for some reason to you three idiots <laughs> over at the three-way dance. These three fucking idiots <laughs> call me Uncle Corny. I don't know these motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm not These motherfuckers are uncle. not even smart enough to work at a goddamn Dairy Queen, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but they the were doing the fucking beaver imitations that are okay in my book. Motherfuckers. <laughs> All right, so until next time, guys, for Subs and Nick, I am the Origin One, and remember, be breezy.